Hi everyone, this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of myocarditis. If you want more information on how myocarditis is diagnosed and treated, please check out my full lesson on this topic. Before we get into the signs and symptoms, let's talk about what myocarditis is. Myocarditis is a condition involving inflammation of the myocardium. The myocardium is the main muscle of the heart. It allows the heart to pump blood. And you can see it in the name myocarditis. Myocard refers to the myocardium. And itis is the suffix referring to inflammation. So myocarditis is inflammation of the myocardium, which is the main heart muscle. With regards to the type of patient that gets this condition, young male patients are classically affected. And in addition to this, it's more likely to affect infants and teenagers. So young patients are more likely to be affected by myocarditis than older patients. Now, there are a variety of causes of myocarditis. Most of them are idiopathic, so idiopathic meaning that the cause is not entirely known. However, some of the known causes include viral infections with Coxsackie viruses or parvovirus B19, bacterial infections like Lyme disease and rheumatic fever, autoimmune conditions like systemic lupus erythematosus, and myocarditis can be due to a side effect from a medical treatment or therapy. So medications like sulfonamide antibiotics can cause myocarditis in rare cases. Now the topic of this lesson is that myocarditis causes a variety of symptoms and clinical findings, and we're going to talk about those in the upcoming slides. Now, if a patient does experience myocarditis, this inflammation of the myocardium, there is actually a wide variety of clinical presentations. Some patients may be asymptomatic. They may not even experience symptoms. Some patients may experience mild or very subtle symptoms. Some patients will experience even more severe symptoms like cardiogenic shock, leading to symptoms of heart failure. And then some patients may even experience sudden cardiac death. So there is a wide variety of clinical presentations of myocarditis. So it's important to think about that when we talk about the signs and symptoms. Some of the signs and symptoms that can occur with myocarditis include chest pain, so this chest pain is going to be retrosternal or a left-sided sternal pain. So if you look at this image here, here is the sternum. Most often the pain is going to be behind the sternum, so retrosternal, or on the patient's left, so left of the sternum, so in this area here. The chest pain in myocarditis is oftentimes going to be non-pleuritic, which means that it's not affected by breathing. It's often non-positional, so it's not affected by position or changes in position. And this chest pain will occur in the absence of evidence of coronary artery disease. If there is coronary artery disease, then the chest pain may be related to that coronary artery disease. Now, it's also important to make note that this chest pain may be pleuritic and positional if the pericardium, which is the sac that surrounds the heart, if that pericardium becomes involved, which would be a case of what we call myopericarditis. So it's a mixture of both inflammation of the myocardium and the pericardium. So if the pericardium is involved, if the pericardium does become inflamed, which can occur in some patients, then the patient will experience pleuritic and positional chest pain. So pleuritic meaning that it is affected by breathing. So if they took a deep inhalation, that would increase the pain. And positional, which means that they would have worsened pain with lying down flat and improved pain with sitting up or leaning forward. So this can occur in some cases if the pericardium is involved. Now, some other signs and symptoms of myocarditis include fever. So this fever can be due to inflammation of the myocardium. You can imagine that if a part of the heart is inflamed, this can lead to the body mounting a fever. But this fever may also be related to the underlying cause that may have led to the myocarditis. So it may be related to a viral infection, which may occur prior to the onset of myocarditis, and it can be upwards of one to two weeks prior to the myocarditis. So a patient may have had a fever one to two weeks before, and then it resolves, and then they have an onset of the chest pain and some other symptoms of myocarditis. So this can occur as well. Patients can also experience fatigue, and again, this may also be due to the prior viral infection as well. Myocarditis patients can also experience arrhythmias. So heart palpitations may occur with inflammation of the myocardium. You can imagine that if the main heart muscle is inflamed, this can cause an arrhythmia. So arrhythmias can be any abnormal heartbeat that can include tachycardia, which is a fast heart rate or a heart rate greater than 100 beats per minute. And then some other arrhythmias that can occur include atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter. Syncope can also occur in some patients with myocarditis. So syncope is fainting. So feeling faint or actually fainting can occur with some patients. And then what's going to be some of the more noted and severe symptoms of myocarditis include the symptoms of congestive heart failure. So an inability of the heart to pump blood effectively to the rest of the body. 
So this can cause a variety of signs and symptoms. Some of them include dyspnea on exertion. So what is that? Dyspnea on exertion is a shortness of breath on exertion. So if you try to exert yourself, you become short of breath, and this is going to be compared to baseline. So you may be fine, and then all of a sudden you have issues with simply walking or simple activities of daily living. If you find that there's some shortness of breath on even basic exertion, this is something that can happen with myocarditis. And a classic question is often, do you have shortness of breath on exertion when walking up a flight of stairs? And if you said yes, and that's different compared to your baseline, then this can be dyspnea on exertion. Orthopnea is also another finding that can occur. Orthopnea is shortness of breath when lying down flat. So because of the cardiogenic shock, fluid can build up in the lungs. And when you lie down flat, that fluid can pool and spread out across more lung surface area. This can cause shortness of breath as opposed to when you're sitting up or standing up as that fluid would only affect a smaller portion of the surface area. So this is the reason why we can see orthopnea. What's also often a question with regards to orthopnea is how many pillows does a patient require in order to sleep? If they require multiple pillows, so they need to be propped up at night at a greater and greater angle, this is more suggestive of orthopnea. And then patients can also experience proxismal nocturnal dyspnea. So proxismal nocturnal dyspnea is waking up in the middle of the night gasping for air. So all of a sudden you wake up in the middle of the night and you're out of breath. You need to breathe. And oftentimes this can be severe enough for the patient to run to a window and open up the window and breathe. So they wake up gasping for air. So this is what we call proxismal nocturnal dyspnea. So these three symptoms are classic symptoms of a left-sided heart failure. Some other symptoms of congestive heart failure that can occur with myocarditis include peripheral edema. So peripheral edema can occur if the right side of the heart is affected, so right-sided heart failure. So you can imagine that if the right side of the heart, which accepts blood from the rest of the body, if it's not able to do that, blood and fluid will accumulate in the body. And this can lead to fluid in places like the extremities, especially the lower extremities. So we can see peripheral edema like this here. So swelling in the extremities. And then some other clinical findings that can occur with myocarditis include tachycardia. So we talked about this before, tachycardia can be found. An S3 gallop may be found in some patients and distended jugular veins. So you can see in this image here, this is distended jugular veins. If you can see prominent and distended jugular veins, this can be a sign of heart failure as well. And then there can be some other signs and symptoms that can occur with myocarditis that is related to the cause. And most often, the known cause of myocarditis is a viral infection. We talked about the most common cause being idiopathic, but the other most common known cause is a viral infection. So some of the signs and symptoms that can occur because of this viral infection include a cough, so maybe a dry cough or a productive cough, diarrhea, so may have watery diarrhea, which can be due to a viral infection, and arthralgias, which are joint pains. And again, this can be related to a prior viral infection. Oftentimes, these signs and symptoms are going to occur before the onset of myocarditis because they are due to the viral infection that has preceded the myocarditis. So these are some of the signs and symptoms that can also be related or associated with myocarditis due to the cause of the myocarditis. But we mentioned a lot of other causes of myocarditis, including autoimmune conditions like lupus and medications and medical therapies, which can cause adverse events like myocarditis. So there can be some other associated findings that are related to the underlying cause. If you want more information on myocarditis, please check out my full lesson on this topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.